to worship. I'm Pastor Amanda Schultz Garcia, and I'm the pastor here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Cashton, as well as at Emmanuel and Bethany Lutheran Churches. Together we are famously, or not, known as the Cashton Three Point Parish. It is my great joy to worship with you today, this third Wednesday in Lent. Lent, a 40 day season before Easter. This gives us time, time for repentance and worship, and time to remind ourselves again and again of the love and mercy of God. People who remember again and again the love of God are resilient. We know that even in the midst of despair, grief, global pandemics, <laughs> we can boldly come back we can faithfully tie in. We can courageously hold on to the promise of God. I welcome you to light a candle as we center ourselves in this time of worship. For we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gather us in, O Lord, as your people, people who are grounded in faith and understand resilience as a gift, a gift that we experience through expecting and knowing, trusting and resisting, believing and living. Be with us, Lord God, we pray. Are reminded that centering on Christ we are resilient. Hear these words and the assurance that God is with us. God is in us by Susan Palo Sherwin. Perhaps we do not remember it as loving arms held us and water of new belongings splashed over us. Each when Ash Wednesday we see the sign again revealed. We had forgotten it on ourselves. We had neglected to see it on others, but it persists, that, that sign, that cross. A smudge of mortality, a nudge of remembrance, 
a remembrance of water poured, a remembrance of anointing, a remembrance of a way made straight for God. You have been sealed with the cross forever. Forever. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Amen. Let us sing together, I heard the voice of Jesus say. chapter. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. A woman who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years was there. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, peace, healing, and hope be with you this day and through the Lenten season. I used only a portion of this Bible story today. See, the, the larger context of this story, the one we often focus on in sermons and Sunday school lessons, is that Jesus healed a woman on the Sabbath day, the day of rest. And Pharisees criticized Jesus for doing work of healing on this day. This leads us to evaluate the rules of the church, no work on the Sabbath, and contrast that with the mercy of God, which is offered no matter what day it is. But what we miss when we take that approach is the actual story of this woman. This woman has been bent over for 18 years. For nearly two decades, she has seen nothing but her own feet, the ground, the feet of others. No one has looked her in the eye for 18 years. Imagine her suffering. I mean, first, the pain that crippled her, and second, never truly connecting with others. We have known the pain of not connecting in the last year. Oh, we've tried with FaceTime and Zoom, but it's not the same. It's not the same as seeing someone in person. Worship has certainly changed. I think what I miss the most is looking people in the eye when I serve communion. It's one of the great privileges of being a pastor to, to break bread, to be within inches of another child of God, and to look her in the eye and say, this is the body of Christ broken for you. <laughs> How I long to look you in the eye again. And Jesus, 
Jesus, who suffers with us, who knows our pain, who offers relief, Jesus healed this woman from her physical pain, but moreover, she was now able to stand and look Jesus in the eye. She was able to look anyone and everyone in the eye, and they too could see her. Being seen, really, truly seen, it, it doesn't happen all that often, especially those who are, for those who are suffering or grieving. When we're suffering, we, we often avoid people, convincing ourselves that we're better off alone. And we, who are not, tend to avoid grieving people. It can be uncomfortable. I mean, if we look them in the eye, they might cry, and, and then we might feel their pain too closely, and, and we might cry. It's vulnerable. We avoid making eye contact with the people who hold up signs for help on the side of the road. We avoid making eye contact with someone in the grocery store that we were supposed to call months ago and forgot. We avoid neighbors and casual chit-chat, which is so much more than casual. <laughs> to look someone in the eye is to see and honor their humanity. And while it can be messy and time-consuming, even convicting to our own inadequacies, it can be so life-giving. Not just for the one who is seen, but for the one who finally sees. For the one who, who looks into the eyes of another person and sees their pain and their hope and their value, that person is changed too. And that's exactly what Jesus models for us in this scripture today. That's the exact gift that Jesus gives this woman. He sees her in the eye and he enables her to see others. But even more, Jesus gives the entire community the opportunity to fully see this woman. And scripture says, she praises God. By the power of Jesus, the love of God, we are healed. We are seen. We can trust that Jesus is present in our suffering. May your faith in this promise fill you with eyes of hope. Amen. Let us continue our worship in prayer as we sing Watch, O Lord by Marty Haugen. Watch, O Lord, with all the Watch, O oh Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. Tend your ailing ones. Rest your weary ones. Bless your dying. Suffering ones, heal afflicted ones, shield your joyous ones, watch your Lord with others who break this night. Watch your with all those who we give 
Your grieving ones, raise your fallen ones, mend your broken ones, watch Guard your little ones and your loved ones. Guide your searching ones and your loved ones. Grant us all your peace and your loved ones. Watch your Lord with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. Just as our Lord boldly loves us, he taught us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we close our time of worship, I offer you this poem, it's from a book called Soul Sisters, Women in Scripture Speak to Women Today. And it was written by Edwina Gately. I first read this poem years ago, but it has stuck with me. And when we began to talk about this worship series for Lent, I knew that I wanted to preach about this woman from Luke's Gospel. And I wanted to share this poem with you. This poem is called The Infirm Woman. Infirm. I guess that means you couldn't do very much. Probably nothing at all. Inactivity had left you flabby, loose of flesh, lacking firmness or solidity, limbs all twisted and stiff. So you must have just shuffled along, all bent down, like a crab. You never saw the sky then. Or, or myriad wondrous stars. You never looked evenly in the eyes of another, but encountered only the brush of their bodies hurrying past you, preoccupied with the busyness of the healthy, leaving you behind, always behind, trailing insignificance. Your world, sister, was largely the swirling sand that rose from the slow shuffling of your rough sandaled feet, leaving you gray and dusty as it made its home in your dragging skirts. People hardly notice you creeping by. They rarely do pay attention to the disabled, but avert their eyes, somehow embarrassed by the spectacle of disfigurement. Does such a sight perhaps remind us of how vulnerable we all are to the ravages of age or illness? Are you our shadow, terrifying us as you scuttle along anonymously at the edges of our lives? Oh, little lady, will you, like so many marked by physical disability, be a continual affront to our false dignity, a distraction from our own infirmity of spirit? 
Will you be to us so self-assured of healthy body, a person to be spurned and rejected, doubly disabled by our prejudice and fears? For we rarely open our hearts to people like you, sister. Nor have we crafted our world to accommodate your bent form. So you must creep around our perimeters, seeking access away into our spaces. You must double-check entrances, exits, stairs, and heights to see if they welcome you or leave you standing helpless like an infant before a rising cliff. Will we slip past you embarrassed? Or will we see in you a graced opportunity to stretch our own crippled spirits, recognizing your inherent dignity and respecting the courage of your endless silent struggle to be a part of a world not fashioned for your infirmity? Will we, blessed with healthy bodies, heal and soothe yours simply by honoring your whole bent self? Will you become whole by how we perceive you? And will we, loving like Jesus, then become whole too? Ah, infirm woman, received and healed by Jesus, stretch our souls, shrunk small by insecurity, challenge us to a deeper vision that sees beneath the broken and celebrates your unique wonder of every human spirit. Light up our shadows, sister, and make us honest, make us whole, like you. And now hear this blessing. Beloved, this suffering won't last forever. Our generous God has great plans for us in Christ. God will strengthen within us what is needed to go forth in confidence and with resilience, to share the good news and to act for justice in the world. In the name of God, the creator, sustainer, and redeemer. Amen. May God be with you till we meet again.